Welcome back, survivors. I'm the Survival Abyss, and we return to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Now, my plan was, after last weekend having done all the missions, that we would probably hop into Operation Genesis, or there'd be a few mods suggested to pick up. There have been that have come in, but I also don't really have any links to some of them either. Some are easy to find, others not as much, so... If you guys do have a suggested mod, you can always leave a link. Just remember, it might not show up right away in the comments, because... In order to fight the bots on YouTube, I do have it, so that way I hold for review any links that are in comments. So if you do have, and you do post comment with a link to somewhere, don't be, like, afraid or not sure why it hasn't appeared. It's just because it's held for review, and I'll probably, once I check it out and approve it, it'll be up as seen. But I'm going to actually do the exercise, because one or two people have wanted to see, like, the full coverage of Operation Genesis, so I'm figuring I'll wait till we get a few more mod suggestions or ideas in place, and then I'll hop into, like, showing those off in more detail. But we'll go through the exercises themselves for a little, for this week. Try to show off all of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we can probably do all of them in one week. So we'll start with Welcome to Jurassic Park. The very basics and everything for Operation Genesis. This way we get the full, entire view of how it completely is as a game. The only mods that are currently active are the DJE mod, and as some people have commented, I guess they haven't watched uh, Best in Slots video, and I don't blame them for that, because unless you're trying to set up the game to, like, that suggestion, you won't pick it up. I ha do have the constant edited, like, the constant.ini is edited to have much more freedom in dinosaur population, fence number... I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, uh, tour length balloon ride length, stuff like that. So yeah, you guys don't have to worry, I'm not under the same restrictions that the vanilla game is. So hello and welcome to Jurassic Park. My name is John Hammond. There's a lot to learn when it comes to running a park, so we better get straight to it. First thing you'll need to learn is how to get around the island. Let me show you now. Yeah, so just move the camera around. Usually it's the player who gets to do that. Okay, now you should try moving the camera. Do 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 do. Will be simple enough. We all over the place. There we go. We're gonna rotate your point of view around. Watch while I do it. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be doing this too much. And I think the one thing I really disliked was by default edge scroll is enabled, which means if you move your mouse into like say the top left to your bottom right, you'll actually rotate the screen as you're moving, which is just kind of weird to experience. I should have that off though. Yeah, so then this is just Q and E. Oh, no, I do have, uh... I do have the edge scroll still active, so I might see if I can quickly change that. I'm wondering fully... Yeah, zoom in, zoom out. In. And out. Okay, well, R or F will do it. Let me just see if I can turn off the edge scroll. Off. There we go. Yeah, much better now. And there's our the DJE Rex. Okay, so... Uh, hey there, Ray Arnold, Jurassic Park's chief administrator, over the day-to-day -day running Jurassic Park. Best way to travel around is to use the island map. The island map gives a complete overview of your island, can see all your park features, and your dinosaurs. Why don't you have a look at it now, and I'll talk to you when you're finished. Yeah, okay, so... We'll let the Rex just... Actually, of course, we skipped out on the best part of that. Oh, I didn't realize it actually carries it around with it for a while. I thought it usually went straight to swallowing, but I guess that's only if it's, like, hungry. Yeah, there's the hunt and the food down, so it should be a little bit more tame for right now. Okay, yeah, tab will open that up. Important part, part of managing park is being able to select your buildings, dinosaurs, keep track of their status. Why don't you search out the park's triceratops and select her? You, or you can use the island's map, go to command, blah da da. There we go. Yeah, so that's our trike. Hey, that was smooth. Let's try it one more time. This time, why don't you find Tyrannosaurus? Of course, we were just at that. Ooh, actually, not too bad texture work done on the trike, is it? Okay, so we'll tab. Okay, those are Dryosaurs. 
There's the Rex. No man, she's not looking very happy. I think we better fast track your lessons along to the Ranger. Good luck. I'm Robert Muldoon, Park Warden. I think you got to me in the nick of time. You're going to need to do something about that T-Rex and fast. You're going to need to find the Ranger Station and deal with this problem. You just select your park's building in a similar fashion to selecting dinosaurs. Hurry now. Okay, let's see. Uh, do, do, do. There's the Ranger Station. Let's jump to the cop or the chopper. Great, you made it here. I think in the future I might need to get even faster, so I've added Goat Chopper function to your main to your manager menu. This will get you to the chopper more quickly. Now you're here, going to need you to get right into the thick of things and use the Ranger Copter to bring that T-Rex under control. Your shuttle copter has many functions, but for now we have enabled the sedate option. That's what you'll need to use to fix our current T-Rex problem. Yes, yeah, so let's get our way over. On top left of the screen, you should see helicopters, radar, carnivores, spears, red dots, or is green. Better find the red dot, fly over to it. Uh, close enough. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, we've already been through that. Yeah, so that should. So I'm actually kind of surprised there's no notification for, like, how close they are to being sedated. But there we go. Okay, fantastic. T-Rex sleeping like a baby in dangerous past. I think it might be that might do for today's lessons. You might need to go relax a bit before continuing. Look forward to working with you again in the future. And yeah, there's the first one. Again, a lot of these are just going to be the most basics of basics for how the game operates, how to do certain things. It is kind of smart, I think, to teach you how to solve your problems with rampaging or angry dinosaurs than how you make them. But yeah, let's head in here, go through all this little bit, and maybe we'll try to do two or, th or sorry, two or three exercises per video. Actually, if we can do three, that would be pretty good, because then we have the entire week three, three, three. I don't know if it'll stay that smooth or not, but we'll still try. Okay. Hello and welcome. It's great to see that you're eager to learn about how to make Jurassic Park a success. I have a sixth sense when it comes to choosing people, and I can see that you've got the makings of an excellent manager. Let's get on with the tutorial. When it comes to running your park, your most important tool is the manager menu. This menu provides you with immediate access to all elements of your park. Try using it now. Okay, right. Try to remember, what is the manager menu? In the bottom left corner. Ah, uh, no, that's summaries. Oh. I don't even know if that was actually what I was supposed to do. Yeah, okay, so I guess... Oh, this must be the entire manager menu they're talking about. As park manager, you'll likely be very busy and difficult to reach at times. Your staff appreciate this and will contact you via the Jurassic Park mail system so that you don't miss any important messages. I'll send you a test message now. And then we just dimp in that. Mail is a very convenient way to find out what's going on in Jurassic Park. Important mail will come with the go-to option, which allows you to immediately jump to the relevant part of your park. Don't forget to check your mail frequently. Well, now that you've mastered the basics, it's time to continue with your lessons. Your objective here is to learn how to create dinosaurs. Let's introduce our dinosaur experts who can take you through the whole process. Hello, my name is Alan Grant. I'm responsible for overseeing your fossil hunting teams. It's my job to make sure that they follow your instructions and that all their discoveries are sent back to your laboratory. Hi, I'm Henry Wu, laboratory manager here at InGen. I oversee the genetics lab. It's my job to extract the dinosaur DNA from your fossil discoveries. And I'm Ellie Sadler. I'm in charge of taking care of your dinosaurs. It's my job to make sure that your star attractions stay happy and healthy. Let's start at the beginning of the process, the fossil hunt. InGen's technology needs dinosaur DNA so that you can create clone, create clone dinosaurs. You can get dinosaur DNA from only two places, Mesozoic Amber and Dinosaur Fossils. Your first step in making dinosaurs involves finding fossil materials and sending them back to the genetics lab. Let's give it a try. Your assignment here is to hatch an Acrocanthosaurus, a large Cretaceous carnivore. First task is to send a dig team out to look for fossils in amber. From the manager menu, select the dinosaurs option. You'll find the uh, fossil hunt listed there. There, there. Well, the fossil hunt from here, you can access some of the richest fossil sites in the world. If you want to know which dinosaurs can be found in dig site, you can always find out more about a location selecting the info option. As you're going to make an Acrocanthosaurus, we have given you access to Hell Creek Site A. Now find the site on the satellite map selected. I wonder if it's the only check mark over here. 
Zoom in. Good. Now place the dig team. A lot of this for people is going to be so familiar in that, but I'll still cover it just that way we can say we've completely gone through JPOG as like a series on the channel. Good. You should now place a team at one of the available dig sites. Be aware that some dig sites are better than others. You should take advantage of the good sites earlier for faster results. Okay, and I think that's that done. So I think all we've got to do is wait for them to... There we go. Nicely done. Sending mail when the team uncovers active source materials. Meantime, leaving the care of Dr. Sadler. Hi. I know there's a lot of a lot to learn here, but if you just follow the steps, you find it quite easy. Okay, there's no point in delaying it any further. Let's make a dinosaur. InGen has made it as simple as possible to create a dinosaur, provided you have enough DNA. You must have more than 50% of a species' DNA before you can make a dinosaur. Thankfully, InGen has provided us with has provided us with some dinosaur DNA so that we can quickly start hatching dinosaurs. Let's check the dinosaur summary see what DNA we have available. Oh, wrong one. Fort dino summary. This, this summary shows you everything you need to know about dinosaurs in your park, including the amount of DNA you can possess. Or, of DNA that you possess. As you can see here, we have more than 50% Taurosaurus DNA. If you're not sure what Taurosaurus is, then you can find out more by highlighting the dinosaur in the summary and selecting info Try it now, and then return to the park. There we go. So the Taurosaurus. This horned, herb this horned herbivore is the largest skull of any animal that ever walked the earth. It feeds upon low-growing plants and lives in small herds. Its crest is used for defensive purposes, providing it with additional armor when attacked. Yeah, so 8 meters in length, like Cretaceous herbivore, Triceratops, and low security requirement. Okay, so next step is build hatcheries, Jurassic Park hatcheries contain everything that is needed to grow a dinosaur from an egg to release size in three weeks. Building Jurassic Park is very easy, all you need to do is cop, go to the build menu and select building type you're looking for. This will open a menu which lists a range of special buildings. Next in this example, when you open the build menu, you'll find hatcheries listed under the dinosaur button. Before you place your hatchery, remember this, hatcheries must be surrounded by security fencing, otherwise your dinosaurs will overrun your park. Please build two hatcheries, placing one hatchery in each of the enclosures. Can you look at this okay, so this is one here. Dinosaurs, hatchery. And I'm trying to remember, is it. Yeah, those are the keys to rotate. So there's one there. And we can do. There we go. Both are inside. So that's the hatcheries done. Fantastic. Select like one of your hatcheries and bring up the hatchery control panel. Species description source lived in herds, so set the hatchery produce five to our source by highlighting five eggs. Back. Yeah, so if the viewing dome is here, we'll do carnivores in the other one. Good. And there we go. Oh god, just like looking comparatively from like the cost of JPOG's dinosaurs, Jurassic World Evolutions. Here it's only like $2,490. Whereas for J or Jurassic World Evolution, it's like hundreds of thousands. Your dig team should find some Acanthosaurus DNA soon. When they have, head on over to the next lab to learn about sequencing dinosaur DNA. In the meantime, enjoy your Taurus source population as they arrive. And we'll do a little spin here so that we can see them. And yeah, we just gotta wait for the dig teams to come back. I might only actually be able to squeeze in two exercises per video, depending on, like, their length. Just because some of the tutorial, it is a little slow to go through, but we will get there in time. Great to see you. Yeah, so we'll have our first one out in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to announce the arrival of our newest dinosaur, Taurosaurus. There he is. Or I guess she is. Again, the textures are fairly well done for the DJE. I'll have to see and go through what uh, suggestions come in for what mods and that I should try and what people would like to see too, but I do think this was a fair base to start off with, uh, just to, like, get our series going. Oh, there we go. Okay, so our dig team's completed its excavations and have unearthed, or uncovered Acrocanthosaurus remains. Okay, so good to see you again. Looks like we've got some Acrocanthosaurus material you were chasing. If you want to make an Acrocanthosaurus, then you need to extract DNA from the following remains. Yeah, so extract that. And extract that. So those are going to take a little while to go through. If you're going to exhibit dinosaurs, you need to make sure they have everything they need to survive in their enclosures. Taurosaurs look like they have a water source, but you need to give them some food. 
Jurassic Park dinosaurs cannot survive on natural food alone. They must eat from the food dispensers or they will get sick and eventually die. Please build one herbivore feeder in your Torosaurus enclosure. Do, 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 and presto. That's all done. Welcome back. Actually, you know what? I was going to put down the uh, carnivore feeder, but I'll probably have to get a prompt to do that anyway. Great, herbivores are starting to get hungry. Must ensure the herb dinosaurs receive all the food and water they need, otherwise they'll start to get stressed. Speaking of stress, herbivores always feel more reassured by seeing some trees around them. You need to plant some trees in your Torosaurus enclosure. When you're planting, trees on your island can have two options. You can plant modern trees. These are cheap and these are cheap but can contain poisons, which make dinosaurs sick. You can also plant paleo trees. Expensive but perfectly safe for the dinos. Please plant some trees over there. Okay. Now, this is one of the things that was edited in the uh, setup for the game. Where it should have the trees be a little more dense than natural. If you're going to Pacific Nacanthosaurus, you need to upgrade the security of your fences. Okay, so let's do that now. And test upgrade. Yeah, there we go. Fences top shape. Excellent. Oh, we need now is 50% Acanthosaurus DNA. Have you checked your genetic summary? Have you been back to Janka Lab and track more DNA? Ah, we'll check right now. Yeah, that's still going through. That's only going to give us 34, so we'll have to get the rest from the amber, so it will take a little bit. Welcome back. But we'll go to these guys and just kind of watch them for a while. Message from Dr. Wu. Oh. Oh yeah, you can tell. Oh, you have 50% acre on the source DNA. Well done. You should head on over to hatch one. Okay, that's just going to say you can really see the difference between, like, say, the vanilla and. Well, actually, I guess they do have kind of a close to the same density. I know the original game when you would put down trees, they didn't really seem all that dense or cluttered together. Yeah, so the Acrocanthosaurus, 13 meters long, early Cretaceous carnivore. Favorite priest is Parasaurolophus. I I can't remember. That had to have always been a thing, but I don't know if Jurassic World Evolution actually has that, where like they have a preferred species that they hunt. This huge predator hunts large herbivores. Its tall spine is reinforced with muscle, giving it great strength. It's one of the dominant predators of the early Cretaceous. It's well adapted to dry conditions. Right to see you okay, so let's go to... Well, actually, let me just make sure... Yeah, this is the right one. We want one Acrocanthosaurus. And that's quite a different texture to that. I wonder if there's even some edits to the model. I feel like there might be. We'll have to see in just a little bit once it is ready to pop out. But yeah, I'll probably just have to do these two exercises and that'll be it. I still have to try to mine the time. Ooh. Okay, dex that extraction complete. Dig team finished. Absolutely. I guess we can do that. And yeah, we... Okay. Okay, right. That's done. Dean extraction is now at 79%. Right to see you again. Yeah, we won't be here too much longer, I don't think, but we will see. There's the acro. Big carnivores get stressed not only because they get hungry and thirsty, but also because they need to hunt. We built a carnivore food dispenser for the Acrocanthosaurus. Now we will in just a moment, but... Yeah, I feel like it is uh, some model edits. Either that, or it's just so well done texture that, like, the... It might even be that. The texture is so well done, you kind of get the illusion from certain angles that it's just, it's full back. It doesn't have, like... There is the tight sail like the regular model has, but the textures hide it really well. Okay, well, let's make sure he gets some food. And let's put it over by, say, uh, the viewing dome there. Okay, good. Now select dispenser and set dispense cows. This small snack will keep the carnivore quiet for a while, but eventually it will want to hunt larger prey. Press dispense now and watch the carnivore it's feeder go. So, cow, sure. put one out. No, oh, and just that for the DNAs there. Okay, where's our acro? You've gotten yourselves quite a ways off, but maybe you'll come back around and go after the cow. I'm trying to remember... I don't even get to watch it go after the cow. Well, at least that's another exercise done.
So yeah, we'll continue with these in the next episode of JPOG. But thank you all very much for joining me on this episode of the series. We still will try to get as many exercises we can done. We might not get them all this week, but we'll try as much as we can. Thank you, though, very much for watching on these tutorial beginner episodes, just to ease us into more later on. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give a like, and if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure in the comments right down below. And until I do see you in the next video, survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.